So in Pro Tools or your DAW, you want to uh, either download a pink noise uh, file or use a signal generator. So I've got a signal generator here in Tools and it's got pink noise here. And the reason why you want to use pink noise is because it's evenly distributed across the octaves. The easiest way to think about this is that pink noise has equal energy per octave and white noise have equal energy per frequency. So between 100 and 200 hertz, and 5,000 and 10,000 hertz, pink noise has the same amount of energy. But for white noise, because it's only 100 hertz, 100 frequencies between 100 and 200, but it's 5,000 between 5K and 10K, then white noise will have much more energy between these different ranges. So we want to use pink noise because that mimics our hearing system. And the next thing we want to do is to make sure that the pink noise level is set to the correct output level. Now, if you look at advice for post-production, it will usually be minus 20. And I think that that's a good general aim to go for. However, you should be aware that, of course, if you are mixing for something like YouTube, which tends to be around minus 14, uh, that means that if you set up your room to be calibrated to minus 20, and you switch over from your mix to YouTube, then YouTube will be much louder. Actually, it will feel like half the doubling of intensity. So when you're setting up your monitor controller, you might want to have one which is a notch for minus 20 and then a notch for minus 14. So if you have a plug-in signal generator, you, you set it to minus 20. And if you have a clip, uh, just play it back and then turn up the level or turn down the level until it hits minus 20, like this. And you can also just use the inbuilt meter in your DAW. Just be aware that the dedicated plugin will probably be more precise. So as we can see, the Protoss one uh, is just slightly below 20 decibel. And while this could potentially have an impact, I think in this case, uh, we need to think about this from a, an all things considered point of view and realize that we're setting this up for a home mixing environment rather than a dub stage or a professional mixing studio. So you want to measure at uh, the listening position that you have, and you can do this by either just holding up your phone or microphone, uh, or ideally place it on a microphone stand. And then we want to adjust the levels in the room. And here's the same, but with a different app. And you want to set your SPL meter to C weighted and slow response. So the advice that you mostly see for uh, post-production is 84 dB SPL, but that is for a cinema room, so a much larger room. And for a home studio, I would say that 79 dB SPL are probably much more considerate levels. So the reason why we're setting up a room at this level is because of the human hearing system uh, and the fact that we don't hear frequencies uh, equal over all SPLs, as which we can see in the equal loudness contours, which is also known as the Shannon Nyquist uh, curve. So the first time you set this up, you probably find that uh, 79 dB feels quite loud. And it's worth saying that any level up to 85 dB SPL is uh, considered within legal limits for an eight hour working day. Uh, and of course, this doesn't mean that you have to mix at these levels all the time. I often mix mid-range stuff as much, uh, much reduced levels and, and only really work in these levels when I want to hear the whole experience or if I work with low frequency to make sure that I hear them correctly. To keep track on how sound levels are affecting you, you can download the NEOS Sound Level Meter app, which is an excellent app, and it will also show you uh, how much of your daily dose that you are getting, which is also what this table is showing you. 